Despite successfully rebooting the franchise with the return of Godzilla, the film didn't perform as strongly as the studio had hoped. Unsure of what direction to take this new Godzilla series, Toho ended up having a contest where the public could submit their own story ideas. The finalist ended up being a dentist named Shinichiro Kobayashi, whose incorporation of themes regarding biotechnology and genetic engineering caught the attention of director Kazuki Amori. The resulting film is Godzilla vs. Biolanti, a film that set the stage for the rest of the Heisei era in all the right ways. Following Godzilla's imprisonment in Mount Mihara, a genetic arms race begins with regards to Godzilla's cells. Five years later, after Dr. Shiragami had lost his daughter Erika to a terrorist attack, he merges her DNA with that of a rose and Godzilla in a desperate attempt to keep her alive, which births the monstrous plant Biolanti. At the same time, Godzilla re-emerges from Mount Mihara, and with both monsters on a collision course, Japan has to once again figure out a way to save their country from the children of man's science scientific hubris. Godzilla vs. Biolanti is one of the most fascinating entries in the Godzilla series. While a natural progression of the tone and style established in the prior film, it is also wholly different than any other film that came before it. The story is more complex, involving numerous plots and subplots. The cast is larger, involving many characters and organizations. And the scope is more expansive, taking place on a global stage concerning multiple nations. It's a complicated, fast-paced story, at least more so than most Godzilla films, and it's told in a way that keeps keeps you engaged all the way through. Godzilla vs. Biolanti also attempts to engage in some thought-provoking themes as well. While still continuing the anti-nuclear theme that was so potent in The Return of Godzilla, it is accompanied and modernized with a focus on the dangers and moral ambiguity of genetic engineering. The film continues to show how the existence of Godzilla has impacted the scientific and political landscape, and while this can sometimes get lost in the shuffle of the plot, it is no less compelling and makes the film feel truly contemporary, even 30 years later. This is a poetic, serious film, driven by genuinely compelling ideas, which is a far cry from the campy schlock that had defined the franchise for decades prior. Each character brings a welcomed point of view to the story that adds to its breadth and scope. Dr. Shiragami, played by Koji Takahashi, brings a stoic sympathy to the well-meaning but ill-fated scientist, while Kunihiko Mitamura as Kazuhiko Kirishima plays his moral opposite, questioning the role of science in the modern age of politics. Masanobu Takashima is great as Kuroki, a young major who is burdened with stopping Godzilla, and who makes up for his inexperience with quick thinking and gut instinct. Toro Minigishi as Colonel Goro Gondo is another great character, who brings a sarcastic, light-hearted wit that lightens the story and makes him inherently likable. And of course, we can't forget Megumi Odaka as the psychic Miki Sagusa, who plays a small but important role here that will continue to expand as the series goes on. You'd think with so many characters and so much going on that the monsters would feel secondary to everything else, but this is not the case. Godzilla vs. Biolanti never forgets to keep the monsters in the forefront, and those who come strictly for the kaiju will get their fill. The film wastes no time getting Godzilla back into action, and once he is unleashed, he is a constant presence throughout. Despite the title, the film is actually more about stopping Godzilla, and it's a thrill ride watching the human cast have to come up with new solutions to each new situation. We get an upgraded Super X, some great military engagements, spectacular city destruction scenes, and in between all that, a couple well-choreographed monster fights. It's practically non-stop action from beginning to end that somehow never overshadows the more heady aspects of the story. The special effects are exceptional on almost all fronts, and in many ways broke new ground for the franchise. Both Godzilla and Biolanti are brought to life with a wonderful degree of expressiveness, and the fights between them, while brief, are brutal. Godzilla's new design design is so good it has become iconic, giving him a menacing, more animalistic look that feels believable while still being recognizable. And both forms of Biolanti are perfectly realized, a blend of beauty and horror that brings to life the themes of the film with precision and clarity. The final form is an especially impressive special effect, and could easily stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the modern-day movies of today.
Unfortunately, all the good stuff makes the negatives shine all the more. Its attempt to be earnest and serious is often undercut by terrible English-speaking actors. They are so bad, they take you out of the experience. And since the film is heavily political, they unfortunately have a lot of screen time. The music by Koichi Sugiyama is also a mixed bag, with some tracks being appropriately somber and beautiful, and others over-the-top and cheesy that clashes with the tone of the film. Still, even with its flaws, Godzilla vs. Biollante is an exceptional Godzilla movie on nearly all fronts. It blends serious-minded human drama with thrilling kaiju action better than probably any Godzilla film that preceded it. It birthed a leaner, meaner, more realistic Godzilla and brought him into the modern age, all while also taking risks and not relying on the tropes and formulas of the past. It is a film ahead of its time, often overlooked and forgotten, but is now considered by many to be one of the best Godzilla movies ever made. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.